Welcome to the GE MDS video training series. In this video, I will show you how to configure the Orbit MCR's 900 MHz radio, also known as the NX915 or the NX radio interface. I'll first begin by discussing the important parameters that you should configure, what they mean to the system, and then I'll dive right into the web and CLI configuration. When you order an Orbit MCR, one of the media options available to select is for an unlicensed 900 MHz proprietary radio. The module provides long distance communications with data rates ranging from 125 kbps to 1250 kbps, suitable to interface with both Ethernet and serial controllers, such as PLCs, RTUs, and SCADA systems. The radio operates in a point-to-multipoint topology and is capable of communicating at distances greater than 20 miles. The orbit interface associated with this radio is called the NX radio by default. This interface comes as a member of the bridge, so it will also assume the configuration for the bridge IP address and firewall filters. If you wish to remove this interface from the bridge, make sure to assign the appropriate firewall filters. As for configuring the interface's radio settings, at a minimum, all you must do to link up two radios is make one unit a remote and one unit an access point. The important parameters to configure for this interface are device mode, modem mode, network name, power, and security. The modem mode must match on all of your units or the radios may be put into auto mode. Auto mode forces the remote to scan through all modem modes and sync up to the access point's modem configuration. Changing the network name from the default is also highly recommended. This should be a unique phrase that will not accidentally match with nearby networks. Let's first look at the web GUI to configure this interface. I'll start with the remote. Log in as the administrator and click Interfaces on the left hand side. Then click NX Radio and basic config. Click Annex Radio and the section will expand. Use this section to adjust the majority of the radio's parameters. The section Security and the tab Advanced Config is used to further configure this interface. Remember, by default, all units come as a remote, 500 modem, and a network name of MDS underscore Annex. This will be my remote unit so I don't need to change the device mode parameter. However, I've planned out my system to need a higher modem speed, so I'll change it to 1250 kbps. Also, to avoid network issues, I'm going to change the network name to something unique. This is also sensitive data. I'm going to encrypt any data sent over the air between my units. Select the security mode, encryption type, and encryption passphrase if using PSK, or certificates if using EAP. Everything else is fine as is for my remote unit. I'll now save the configuration and press OK. Now I'll configure the access point. Navigate to the unit's web GUI and log in as the administrator. Again, click Interfaces, then click NX Radio. Click Basic Config, and then NX Radio, and the section will expand. Adjust the radio's parameters to fit the system. This will be my access point so device mode needs to change. Also, I'll change the modem speed to match my remote 1250 kbps. The network name also has to match, so I'll change that to something unique. Encryption is also needed in my setup, so I'll enable that feature in the security section and choose the appropriate passphrase and encryption type. Everything else is fine as is for the access point unit. I'll save the configuration at this point. I'll now quickly cover how to set this up using the command line. Log in as admin to the remote unit and issue the following command. Remember at any time during this command, pressing the tab key will bring up a list of available configuration options. Change the command after nx-config to best match your system and once satisfied commit the configuration. Repeat this step on the access point unit and commit the configuration when ready. We can verify these units are associated by navigating to the Access Points Remote Database. To get there, click on Interfaces, then NX Radio. At the Status tab, click NX Radio. Then scroll to Connected Remotes about halfway down. 
When a remote associates to the access point, an entry will be placed in this table and will dynamically update all the displayed statistics. You can fully verify connectivity by opening up a CLI window and pinging the remote's IP address. If successful, you have properly set up the 900MHz link. I hope this video was helpful for you, and for additional information, please visit our website at www.gemds.com.